Hey guys, this is Drew with Kusha Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're gonna be talking about fake Morgan dollars. We had uh, a client recently uh, be a victim of buying a fake Morgan dollar and it was a key date. We're gonna be talking about that in this video and how you can uh, prevent that from happening to you. But yeah, let's get this video started. So to set the scene a little bit, we have a great friend of ours that has been buying from us for a long time. He uh, recently wanted to become a PCGS member and start sending coins in. And so what he did was he sent us, um, he sent me a picture and he said, hey, can you evaluate this coin and you think it, it has a great shot at PCGS? I just want to know your grade expectations. And that happens pretty frequently with a lot of our clients because uh, we just want to give them information and we don't charge them for it. We're just like, hey, we think this is a certain grade. Um, we think you'll do great. We think you'll do bad. We think it's cleaned. Uh, all that's really important. And when he sent it to me, this coin, I'll throw a picture up right now. Um, it wasn't, it, as soon as I saw it, I knew it was fake. And uh, so what he did and what we're going to do in this video is we're going to take apart that coin, show you guys everything about it, give you guys uh, our perspective of the coin, but also just, uh, you know, things that we can do, um, red flags, um, things that our client encountered to um, just know that you're going to be buying a fake. There's a few things that I saw in the beginning that really uh, kind of scared me. And so we hope this helps you guys, um, even though it's a really tough time for our client, uh, this really should be able to help you guys in many ways, many facets. Um, but yeah, let me show you guys some stuff. So a lot of you guys may be asking, how does this happen to collectors? Where do these things come from? And how do they get into their hands? Well, the origin of all of these really start in China. China makes a lot of fakes and a lot of them were used for business. So people would use them uh, you know, people would interject them either into circulation or when they were using them, um, they would try to have uh, collectors buy them. You know, like this one in this video, we're actually using uh, a coin that our client bought. It's 1893 CC. And if you guys know anything about CCs, they're pretty expensive, especially in mid tier to high tier grades. And so that's something for you guys to understand. A lot of these are going to be coming out of China, and the coins that we're going to be running into now that are fakes. Are going to be better dates 93s 93cc so right now we're going to reveal what our client paid for this coin right here and if you guys take a look at this coin on the obverse and on the reverse i mean the coin looks pretty good um it looks like it would be you know vf almost xf condition and uh you know like i said if if you if you guys take a look at this coin and uh you know, just from the naked eye, to see there's, there's a lot of issues with it. That's something that a common collector or someone that's just getting into the space sometimes doesn't really run into. So we're gonna take you guys down the rabbit hole here, show you guys a little bit about the coin, but also show you a little bit about the red flags that I saw personally, and, and uh, something that revealed to me that uh, from the get-go, this deal was very, very wrong, and someone was trying to pass off something to our client. And that's something that um, is my personal opinion. It's nobody else's opinion. But after I show you guys these red flags, you guys might be considering what I'm considering. So when this coin was purchased last year, um, it was purchased for $1,100. And it had a $20 layaway fee. And so 1080 in terms of a price for a coin is super cheap, especially if it's a VF3593 CC or better. Um, many of these go in the thousands of dollars. And I'll show you guys comps of VF35s to XF40s. Many of them are gonna be multiples of 1100. So the first problem with this coin is that it was sold at such a cheap price that you really should be running away from something like this. But like I said, if you're a common collector, or someone that's just starting out in the hobby, you're thinking you're getting a great deal, someone's helping you out and being kind, uh, most of the time that's not gonna be the fact. Um, people that sell you coins that are genuine, that are nice, 
that are original, they're going to be selling you something that's really close to market value or a little bit above that because it's hard to find. So uh, first kind of tip, first kind of red flag is if you guys are going to be buying something or buying a coin from somebody and they're offering it to you for a third of the market value or half the market value, that's when you know you're probably getting ripped off just just off the get-go. Before you know any die markers on the coin, before you check the weight, before you check um, you know if it's if it'll actually stick to a magnet and so uh, you know the what if grade on this coin like I said would be about a VF 35 and so um, if the coin is really authentic it would be a lot more in value for me do I think there's a motive behind it um, for me I think there is a motive behind it um, there's two different possibilities that could have happened here they either didn't know about it or they're trying to pass off the loss to a customer so sometimes coin shops, uh, if they haven't been in business too long, or if they make a mistake occasionally, will, might try to pass off a problem coin to somebody else, especially if it's fake, right? So this coin I would say is worth about two bucks, okay? Um, but if it was a genuine coin, it'd be worth about two to $3,000, right? So say they bought this coin, they saw it, and they're like, oh my gosh, this is fake. We can't get our money back. Um, we could either put it in the fake pile or we could sell it to the next customer. And just seeing this plastic on the outside of the coin really gives me a red flag, right? So the the common question would be if you don't have a really expensive tester, can you test this coin's weight in this plastic? I mean, it's sealed shut. I can't. I can't test the, the weight on this uh, on this coin when it's shut. Um, can you test uh, it, you know, its uh, authenticity when it's shut? If you have an expensive, uh, if you have an expensive wear, you can. Um, so the first kind of off the bat thing here is that why is it in this plastic? And so we're going to take it out of this plastic to do a few tests on the coin. You get, give you guys a perspective on uh, the die markers on the coin. Give you guys a perspective on if it'll pass all of our tests. And if it does pass all of our tests, I'd be surprised because um, just seeing very uh, a lot of Morgan dollars, you you're going to understand. Um, that this one really is not genuine. So let me take you guys around and show you guys a few tests that we're going to do. All right, guys, to start off the test here, we're going to be doing just a nice comparative analysis of the 93cc that our client received um, to a coin that is genuine. So for our comparative uh, coin here, we're going to use the 93cc in a PCGS holder graded VF25. The reason why we're using this one is because we sold this one to our client a few months ago, and also it's in the kind of same grade range, so you guys can get a nice little comparison. When you take a look at this coin, just nice, even, um, you know, originality on the coin. Things we showed you guys a few months ago. Very beautiful piece, kind of has a lot of underlying toning. And, uh, you know, I just like the coin overall. Very happy when we sold it, but also very happy when we got it. Picked this one up at uh, the Cowtown Coin Show. We'll be back there in a few weeks. But let's show you guys the other one here. So this is the one that our client bought. Now, if you guys want to take a look at uh, the, just the dates here, you can see there's kind of like an equal spread between uh, the 1, the 8, the 9, and the 3. And this is what ultimately led me to think this was a fake to begin with. And let's take a look at the other date here. So we have, uh, you know, the one, the eight, the nine, the three, very equal in terms of, you know, its spacing between the uh, the date. But when we look at the other one down below, you can tell right away that this coin, uh, you know, the dates really bunched together. The dates not really as uh, spread out as we thought it would be, and uh, yeah, it's just really scrunched. So that's for me in the beginning, really thought that this coin would be fake and uh, wouldn't be genuine. But let's keep showing you guys a few other things here. Um, so when you take a look at the you know the overall coin, are you guys enjoying today's video so far? If you are, please leave a like. That would really help us connect with more people, uh, give them a unique perspective on the space, uh, get them involved with coin grading, um, CAC, coin shows, all the stuff that you guys really enjoy from our channel. Uh, yeah, and so subscribe if you're new, comment your thoughts on uh, what you heard so far, and uh, yeah, we look forward to reading uh, what you guys say. Uh, welcome to new subscribers, and let's get back to today's video. The 
you see how the luster on the face is the same as the luster in the fields here? I mean, look, the luster in the fields are the same as the face. And it's almost like a common surface, right? And that's really not how these were designed to begin with. And so when you take a look at everything here, uh, you know, you want some peripheral luster to be happening in the fields, but also, uh, you know, you just want that separation in terms of its quality on the face, even if it is a circulated example. And the way we're going to figure that out here is if we just take a look at this coin. So when you take a look at this coin, you're going to see that there is some contrast between the light, how the light reflects, even if it has been circulated off the face compared to it in the fields, right? And so the fields were designed for that, but the face wasn't to begin with, right, until it was circulated. And so uh, when you're taking a look at this coin, you could just tell that, you know, a lot of the details are intact. Um, the fields are pretty nice still. Um, when you flip over the coin, uh, we're going to take a look at the mint mark also. So you see how the mint mark right there, you know, it's just nice, you know, wholesome mint mark. And the C's are actually pretty close together on, on both sides of the... So, what I'm, what I'm referring to here is that this C is really close and bunched up together on both of these. And uh, we're going to actually show you guys the other mint mark here real quick. So we're going to flip over this 93CC, give you guys a little bit of a comparison. Okay, so you guys can see that right there, That I mean, look at, there's a kind of a big discrepancy in terms of its size even with these the Carson City uh, mint mark on uh, the fake Morgan dollar. Um, and when you take a look at it, I mean, when you see this bunching here, so there's a little bit of a space, like a needle will be able to pass through this side of the C on both of these Cs. When you look at these Cs, I mean, the C isn't even complete on both of these. It's just a very kind of uh, half crescent C on these. And so the mint mark is so huge um, compared to one that's in a genuine example. And that alone for me as well, when we make this one, uh, I just know it would be a fake. And, uh, you know, it just depends on what press they had compared to the mint press. And the mint press was, I mean, was very developed and very, uh, very uh, tough to duplicate and replicate. And so when we're taking a look at, you know, the one here and the one dollar, uh, there's actually like a softness of strike on, uh, you know, you can see that there's almost full detail on the dollar here. When you're taking a look at this one in the light, there's really just a softness on the N and the E. And uh, when you take a look at the other one, even though if it's been circulated or not, there's no real softness to it. Uh, you know, this coin's not known to have a soft strike, especially on the details in the fields. And uh, that's something to, for you guys to realize as well. But if we wanted to take a look at the surfaces of this coin um, on the back as well, I mean, a lot of it's really, grin you know, grungy and dirty. And once again, there's not very much luster change between. So... Just look at the details here and then look at the details there. Um, this one could be, you know, if someone really wanted to pass off, they could just say, hey, it's been clean, something that has been of an issue. Um, but when we start to feel the rims of the coin, it feels pretty, you know, pretty sharp, pretty uh, brand new, especially right here. And so uh, replicating that wear is, is going to be tough for a lot of people. What I would say and suggest is that this coin, when it was made, <clears throat> It was made, uh, you know, by a different kind of metal, and uh, when we, uh, you know, when they got it out of there, it started to kind of get this kind of gunk in the fields here, and uh, maybe they dropped it in some dirt, gave it that that circulated look, and uh, you guys can even see that gunk right here on the coin, kind of filling into the face, and so, um, you know, a lot of these when they circulate, and, uh, you know, a lot's been happening to them, you're not really going to see this kind of ugly gunk in the fields unless something uh, environmental has happened to it. Um, when we feel up here, I don't know if there's something that, no, that's just something that I'm, I'm trying to look at. But um, the thing about this one, I think it's just a really, really good fake. I mean, I, I'm surprised that our client, you know, I'm not surprised our client fell for this one. I might have fallen for this one to begin with because, I mean, this coin really is, um, I mean, really is a good example um, of a fake. And, uh, you know, tell me what you guys think down below. I do think this one is a fake through and through. Um, but, yeah, let's take a look at the other one real quick. So, you know, as the first test, I think this one's pretty good because, you know, it just gives you guys, uh, you know, a way you guys can check coins, way you guys can, you know, pick them apart, give them, uh, you know, give them their... 
given their day in court. Um, we're going to take a little bit uh, time to look at, kind of at the stars here, at the E, the P, everything else. And as you can see, guys, they're kind of blocky. Um, and you guys can, like I said, see that crud in the B, the U, the S. Um, it's just, it just feels very strange. It just doesn't feel very right. Um, and so we're going to be able to compare these um, to the other one. But, you know, you guys can see that in the fields there. It's just, it's just a weird look to the coin. And I can't really describe it for you unless you look at a lot of Morgan Dollars. Or if you subscribe to our channel, you guys are going to see that a lot. Um, but for me, the surfaces of the coin just don't feel genuine whatsoever. And another thing that really stuck out to me was the three on this coin. So you see this three here? So right on this tip really kind of scares me. And that was my kind of problem to begin with. And so uh, when we take a look at this three, you see how that really that three is really defined. That three really has that nice kind of uh, nice kind of look to it right here. You see how it's really uh, pointy and really poignant and uh, really present. Uh, yeah. So that for me that was a big big trouble issue. And so uh, when we're looking, you know. Look at the crud. There's no real crud or issues in the, you know, the U and the S. And when you're even moving the coin around, you can just still see the remaining luster on the coin. Die markers aside and everything else, the luster on the coin is still present, especially in the fields. And so it's going to be a little bit harder for me to see this one for you guys because it's a little bit darker. It is an original coin. And so when you're moving the coin throughout, you can kind of see the, just the, the general wear on, on the high points, but nothing that I would say or indicate is a weak strike. And all of these are really nice and pronounced. And if we could pull up uh, this one right here as an example coin. Um, you see how the, I mean, just a lot of the details themselves, the B, the I, the R, the U, the S, all of them are going to be a lot larger, it seems, um, than this one. And so, um, for me, that's kind of strange. You know, it, um, if you're taking a look at the P and the L and everything else, I mean, just take a look at the I right here. This I is almost touching uh, the bottom of this feather. And if you look at kind of the crossbar on the bottom, it's actually pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty big. And when you take a look at the crossbar up here, you can see there's a lot more room uh, to be had on, you know, between the two feathers there. Uh, when you're taking a look at the B, the B spacing's uh, pretty pretty even. If you take a look at the bar, you know, they're supposed to be equal bars um, above and below. And what does a bar mean on this coin? So you see how there's like that genuine, genuinely kind of like little uh, triangle on both sides, up and bottom. Well, this one's kind of strange, right? You see this, this kind of triangle right here is not equal to this whatsoever. So um, it's just not equal in terms of... Uh, you know the way it was the way it was struck um, you know that you looks pretty good the s um, you know it, it doesn't look it looks a little bit bigger and it also doesn't look symmetrical to this s um, and so taking a look at all these these facts um, the spread on this n and the u is a lot is a lot wider in my opinion if you guys just want i mean it's not we're not you know we're not showing off something too crazy here but um, the spread for me is very strange, very weird. Um, and so a few things to consider, a few things to uh, understand about this coin. Now let's go do a few tests. Let's go uh, show you guys a few things. Uh, and uh, ultimately we just want you guys to learn. So we're going to give you guys a weight test and a few other ones to uh, try to level out the understanding on this coin. All right, guys, so first up, we're going to be doing the weight test. Just for you guys to know up front, not every single thing is going to be uh, clear. And some things are going to work and some things aren't going to work. It just depends on how good the replica is. And so when we take a look at all three of these coins, this is the 93cc and the two genuine coins. So let's weigh one first of the genuine. All right, so uh, for most coins, we're going to be expecting uh, it to expecting Morgan dollars to weigh about 26.75 26.74 um, and so this one would weigh you know ex exactly what we would think this one's almost like an unk but it just has a lot of kind of kind of uh, dinginess to it uh, let's weigh the 93 cc give it that one a test 
Okay, so 26.66. So when we're taking a look at this coin, I mean this one almost fits in the weight parameters. It's a little bit less, it's been circulated from what it looks like, and so um, for this test I would say it actually passes. And uh, that kind of surprises me because most Chinese fakes, um, like I said, are made for circulation. And so when they were made for circulation, um, <clears throat> they're gonna actually just be passed into uh, the general public, be used for currency. But when you're trying to pass off a great knockoff, you're gonna have to be really close to the weight and you're gonna have to be very meticulous with your press. And so whoever made this 93cc did very well with the weight because you know whenever you go to weigh it, it'll weigh almost what a Morgan dollar weighs. And so uh, let's take you guys to the next test. This one did pass for this one. All right, so we're out by the safe. We're gonna do a little magnet test for you guys. This is the coin right here. Oh, look at that, passed the magnet test. That's pretty good. Uh, let's see what else it can do. All right, so right here are two genuine Morgan dollars and uh, right here is the 93cc. So we're gonna be doing uh, just a drop test and you guys are gonna hear uh, different sounds possibly, so just give it a listen. Now, did you guys hear that sound? That sound is much different from them. Let me guys, let me just give you guys one more listen here. You guys hear that? Yeah, so there's a big delineation between sounds of a coin. And so uh, I was listening to an interview recently and they said uh, they were bringing coins in the shop and someone actually dropped one or they were unloading it and they heard that sound. And when they heard that sound of this 93cc, they said, oh, this one's fake. Um, and they took it out of the pile immediately. And so for the drop test, I would say the 93cc failed. All right guys, so we're gonna finish this video out with a synopsis of every test and give you guys a wrap up conclusion and something you should understand um, just about this coin and about buying coins in the future. So for the weight test, I'd say it passed. Um, for the magnet test, I'd say it passed. Uh, for die markers and genuine comparison, I would say it failed. Um, did not meet expectations, a lot of problems with the coin, the way it looked the way it was struck, the luster, everything on the coin was very wrong. Uh, when we take a look at, uh, you know, just the feel of the rim, feel of its condition, I would say the coin uh, itself is, it felt new, especially on the, on the, the edge. Um, and when we took a look at the drop test, um, very stark and different sounds when you hear them, uh, hear this coin versus a genuine coin. And so, yeah, um, for this coin, I think it would fail. I don't think it would pass at PCGS. I don't think it would pass at NGC. Um, just from my knowledge and understanding of uh, the, the coin and also just my understanding of Morgan Dollars and uh, what I've experienced in the past. So we've sent a lot of coins in. Only one's really come back counterfeit. You guys saw that one um, that we submitted for Tylon. We also had ones that had counterfeit and mid marks. Uh, just mint marks that weren't genuine and so we used all of that compared it all together and tried to give you guys a balanced analysis and so the real the real reason why we're doing this video is we're trying to bring it all together for you guys give you guys um, our opinion our perspective on this coin and how it could help you in the future and also offer of this video to our client as a form of evidence as a form of our conclusions as a coin dealer down in Houston and uh, and so we hope, that, we hope it helps you guys. We hope it gives you guys a, a new perspective on what you guys can expect. Um, watch out for these coins anywhere. They could be at coin shows. They could be online. They could be at coin shops. All of it really depends on your knowledge of the space. And so before I would say get into a big coin like this, or if you are moving into big coins like this, um, the best thing to do is understand that you're going to be paying close to market value. So most of our coins that we pay for um, are going to be paid 
uh, around, you know, we're going to make around 10, 15% on a coin if we're lucky. And so if someone offers you a coin, you're making 60%, 50%. Um, sometimes that for me is just a red flag, especially with a known beautiful date like this one. Um, also, if you're getting into the space, what I would say is read uh, or um, spend a lot of time online uh, going through the forums. Those will be really helpful for you in terms of knowing if a coin's genuine, but also give you a lot of uh, backstory, a lot of things that are happening with these coins that would just give you um, a great perspective, especially when walking into a coin deal when you where you could spend a few thousand dollars. And so uh, that, those are kind of my wrap up points. Um, and now I'm going to tell you guys what I think the client should do about it. Um, if, uh, you know, if this evidence was enough, what should the client do to return the coin? And, uh, you know, what should you guys do in case this happens to you? So like I said, personally, I think this coin is not genuine. And so what I would do is I would return it to the shop that I got it from. Uh, our client has the receipt. Our client has the coin. And there's two things that are really going to happen when you go to the coin shop. A, they're going to admit that it was a counterfeit and they apologize and refund. Or they're going to admit that it's a, it's a counterfeit and they're not going to want to give you a refund. And so a few things that you could do in case that they don't give you a refund, um, in case that they say, no, it's completely genuine, you don't know what you're talking about. Um, yeah, so what I would do personally is I would get uh, I would get in touch with the Better Business Bureau. I would get in touch with the police. Um, I would also leave a review on their shop. Um, I would also... Uh, you know, I'd also talk to the coin, the coin theft uh, police. I could leave you guys a link down below to just, you know, there's thefts that happen with coins. There's problems that happen with coins. A lot of that can be alerted to them, and they can broadcast that out to many dealers and many collectors. And uh, another thing that I would also do um, with leaving a review is leave it an extensive review. So um, if our client didn't get his money back, I would leave an extensive review about this coin. Uh, why it failed, why it, it didn't work, and how we know it's fake, and why we and we actually got it from that shop. So people that would come in next time would understand that this coin is fake, um, and understand that they sell fakes. And uh, the main reason why, like I said, that we're talking about this video is to help you as the listener, as the the watcher, but also to help um, our client get kind of a a well, well balanced view of the coin that he purchased, and uh, and I think that if he goes through with this, and if you guys, you know, sometimes it's the hard road, the tough road, um, especially for for stuff like this to do it. But the ultimate goal is that this doesn't happen to somebody else. This isn't um, somebody else's problem. Also, I think that you know sometimes in our life that we have to make the tough the tough call, the tough decision. But ultimately, it's going to help the most people, and uh, you know I think our client has that in him. He's a great guy, wonderful man, and so if you guys enjoyed today's video, if you guys want to see more videos from us, please leave a like, uh, comment your thoughts down below of this whole situation. What would you do personally? Um, and uh, subscribe if you're new, guys. I mean, more videos every week. We're gonna be talking about genuine coins. Next video got a great little package uh, in, and so we will see you guys in the next one.